We have been trying to think our way out of pain. It does not work. We are misunderstanding what the Bible says about the mind. The mind is not just these thoughts that we, and conclusions. The Bible, when it speaks of mind, is so much bigger than that. When we renew our minds, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to change my mind, but I'm going to change the, my entire way of thinking about a situation. It's not just a calculation. And so that's why so many of you are struggling. You're pulling down thoughts, casting down thoughts, right? How many of y'all got a pocket full of wild thoughts that you've taken into captivity? They still in captivity. You don't know what to do with them. You got a wild thought zoo. Any, any thought lion tamers in here? Y'all got cages and whips, and you're still pulling down thoughts, and your heart's still broken. And this is why. Because we're asking God why instead of asking God heal. Because we think the answer is going to heal us, but it's not. And so if you will just write this minute, if y'all going to take this away from her, and I'm going to ask you to stand right here. If you would write this minute, decide. I'm going to be healed instead of answered. Okay. Ooh, she's like, I ain't say okay right away. <laughs> I'm willing to be healed instead of answered. Because if you're willing to be healed instead of answered, you can get out of this stuck place. If somebody is, this is your word, I suggest you jump up and grab it. If you're actually willing to be healed instead of answered, because you want the answer for your mind. But what is your carnal mind going to do? Your carnal mind is enmity with God. So you just take healing instead of answers. <sighs> Jesus, heal his heart. We come as partners boldly before the throne of grace together, and we're asking for help with our hearts, because all we really want is to not be in pain. All we really want is to not be in pain. And Father, collectively, as I lay hands on one woman, but you're touching many, many women, that we lay down our demand for answers. We just, what we really were asking for was to be in less pain. And that you can do. So God, I thank you for touching painful places, limps in the spirit, broken hearts. Father God, in the name of Jesus, heal a heart with your love, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Keep receiving that, keep receiving that. Thank you. I will tell you that the betrayal had nothing to do with you. By the way. <laughs> God said to tell her it didn't have anything to do with her. We, and you know what? A betrayal almost never does. It hurts you. It got something to do with you in that way. But people are broken, and they hurt people. That doesn't make it feel better, but this is one of the dangers of our desperation for answers. When we don't get the answer we want, we make stuff up. So our dedication to answers is really getting in our way because we make stuff up and then, and usually what we make up is that it's our fault. Because when it's my fault, I can control that. I can beat myself up when I have downtime. I can wake up in the middle of the night and hate myself. I can drive to work and hate myself. I can go to lunch and hate myself. Are you ready to stop doing that? Yeah, are you sure? Are you sure? Because it's not a good pastime. It's not a good pastime. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Perfection. Perfection. And so we make up an answer. It's my fault. If I had done this and I had not done that, maybe I came on too strong. Maybe I didn't come on strong enough. Come on, sisters. You know what I'm talking about. Did I, I, didn't, I wore too much makeup. I didn't wear enough makeup. I was too skinny. I didn't have the right curves. I'm too big. What is that? We look for all of these things because as long as I got something to do with my idle hands, I feel like I'm making progress, but you're just kicking up dirt because you want an answer. But Jesus came. He put on a body so that he could feel everything that we feel. 
He says, we have, what does Hebrews 4.15 say? We have not a high priest who cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. That word infirmities means weaknesses. He knows what it feels like. Our physical body is weak. When our heart is weak, when our mind is weak, we feel some kind of way. And Jesus felt every single one of those feelings. And it says now he's in heaven. He went back up there, sprinkled some blood on the mercy seat. He's praying for you 24-7 from the place of understanding exactly how you feel. And you keep asking what he thinks. Why? Why don't you take the feeling? So now we can go boldly before the throne of grace in our time of need, and we're not taking our broken heart there, we're taking our questions. Here's the difference between thinking and feeling. This is going to change a lot for some people, because a lot of times I ask people, how do you feel, and you you tell me what you think. How do you feel about that? I mean, I think it was wrong. I did not ask you what you thought, sis. I asked you how you feel, then I gotta pull out my trusty feelings wheel. I've never done that with anybody in this room. But then I gotta pull out my wheel. I I just was walking past you. I didn't even say nothing. Because we just keep telling people what we think. This is what I think. I think they shouldn't have did that. I think of this, I think of that. I did not ask you. It's so hard to get somebody to say, I'm scared. That's how I feel. I'm grieving. That's how I feel. I'm mad. That's how I feel. I'm confused. This is why mental health is actually harder than physical health. I know, don't get mad at me. I know some therapists in here and you want me to make sure I tell everybody that physical health and mental health are exactly the same. They are not. They are not. Because if my leg hurts, I understand that and I don't question my mind. I don't question my identity. I don't question myself. But when you feel like you can't trust your thoughts, you don't even know what's real. And that's a lot harder than having a cast on your leg. That's harder. You got an Excedrin in your purse right now for a headache, boop, it'll be gone. But mental health and illness and stress is not like that. It's nuanced and it's hard. And nobody wants to believe they can't trust themselves. Me and my mind, we are. That's my daughter. She's backing me up. Me and this brain here? Because I've always been smart. I was the nerdy kid. So if I can't trust my brain, let me tell y'all, COVID didn't, COVID scared me, I didn't want to die. But man, people started reporting that brain fog. I was like, oh, the devil, my brain? Like, (laughs) I got my brain in my mouth. Like, I need to be able to talk and I need to be able to think. And so that's a threat to me to think that I can't trust who I am, that fundamental sense of identity. So if I suggest to you you're struggling with depression, you might not want to hear that because that means you can't trust your own mind. And that's way scarier than physical therapy. And so we don't like to feel, so we try to think our way out. Here's the difference between thinking and feeling. Thinking is a process that we are constantly engaged in to answer questions. So if you want to know what you're thinking about, the best thing to do is say, what what question are you trying to answer? When you're Googling at 2 a.m., I've never done that. When you're Googling at 2 a.m., what answer are you trying to get? And don't tell me you're trying to get the answer for the best treatment or the answer for, you know, how to find a husband in 72 days. That's not the actual answer you're trying to get. But, but that looks like it on the surface. And you keep thinking, if I solve these surface problems, I'll be okay. Because the bigger question is much scarier than the little one you're wrestling with. Am I right? Am I right? She's like, don't mess with me. Please don't mess with me. Please don't mess with me. The question's bigger. And we're trying to gain some control with these little things, but the question is bigger. It's a bigger question. But God said, ask me, ask the big one. Sometimes we don't want to ask the big one because that's the one that we think might take us out of this God thing. I'm trying to hang in here with him and if, and we're just going to try not to have that conversation so I can stay with you, Lord. Please stop bringing that toxic relationship dynamic to your faith. We're just going to not talk about that like we didn't see that, and we're just going to act like that. I'm just going to act like I didn't see that lipstick on your collar. I'm just going to act like I didn't see that glitter on your forehead. I'm just going to act like so that we can stay in here together. You want me to go away too, don't you? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Goodness, I don't know. I'm feeling like I'm not getting love. I'm just like, please, Dr. Nita, do not stop right here. 
we have to change this relationship dynamic. And I understand it. What I love about it is that you are dying to hold on to God. What I don't love is that you believe that this is the only way you can do it, that there's not a healthy, emotionally healthy relationship available to you with God because we haven't had one here. God is asking you to stop avoiding the topics, sis. He's ready. He's there. Let him comfort you first. Because when we're mad and we're scared and we're scratching, it don't matter what people say. You don't even hear them. Because what you're really saying is, my heart, my heart. So your thinking is defined by the questions that you're asking. Your feeling is defined by why. So if you're asking, why did my parents get divorced? Why did my parents get divorced? Why did my parents get divorced? And the question, you're asking all those questions because you don't want to feel sad. Maybe it was for the best. Now when I really look at it, my mom had these issues. I think she might have had an undiagnosed mental disorder probably. And my father, you know, he came from it. And you're trying to answer all these questions. You're trying to get them to take personality tests and go to counseling. But what you really want, uh-oh, I'm standing in the wrong place again. That's it. <laughs> what you really want is to not feel responsible. Or what you really want is to be delivered from the fear that your marriage is going to go down too. So if you can describe what went wrong with them, then you can be free from the fear of it going wrong for you. And so if you just went to God instead of saying, God, what happened to my parents? God, I'm scared. Minister to my fear. Go boldly before the throne of grace with your fear. Father, Jesus, I'm scared. God, I am so scared, I can barely think. Please help me in this space. That's what boldly before the throne of grace looks like. Not tell me what happened to my parents. And if we will get down deep, we can do something. And God cares so much about your heart. And I want to uproot a lie that has been told, misstated, met, preached with good intention, different things. But God actually does care how you feel. He does. He does. He does. He actually cares how you feel. Who hasn't felt like he cared how you felt? They like. Why didn't you care? Why did you think he didn't care? She's like, I know she won't ask me directly. <laughs> Because I felt he left me all alone to myself. That's fair. I don't want to be alone, and I'm alone, and he could do something about it, and why am I still alone? First John chapter 3 has one of my favorite scriptures. The reason that there's evil in this world, that we are broken, that we have this pain, that relationships fall apart, is the devil. It says he sinneth from the beginning, but for this purpose was the Son of God manifested to destroy the work of the enemy. So what I would challenge you to do, first of all, is put the fault in the devil's lap. Anybody ever see that movie, Devil's Advocate? There's a line in it where he says, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing you that he didn't exist. He lays low to keep you from fighting him directly. Because he knows if he stays out of your line of sight, you'll question slash blame God instead of catching him by the neck. And as long as you don't catch him by the neck, he can keep doing you in. So that pain that we end up with, God, why? Let it turn to anger, devil. It's a no from here. God's going to heal me and I'm going to fight you and things will start to turn around. 